Hey guys, Drought here, and today we are going to be starting a new Civilization 5 Let's Play. So in this playthrough, we are going to have a theme which is gonna be the Southeast Asian War. So if you haven't already known, in the original Civilization 5 game, there is only two Southeast Asian civs, which are Siam and Indonesia. So to make this possible, I have added five modded civs. So we are going to go through each and every one of them. The first one is Bolkia from Brunei, Darussalam. Plus 2 gold from outgoing trade routes, resource of oil. Worked by the Origin City. Naval units have a 33% have a chance of being able to sell exotic goods when built. So their unique units is the Sea Nomads. It replaces the Caravels. Much weaker with less movement, but less costly to build. May capture enemy ships and gains double movement on the coast. So it is kind of like the private tier, but it replaces the caravel. So their unique improvement is the Kampung Air. It's only buildable by Brunei of course, and must be built on the coast and on flat lands. Unlock at compass. Yields plus 1 food and plus 1 culture, as well as plus 1 gold at navigation. Yields extra gold when a cargo ship is adjacent to it. So the next modded sieve is Cek Bonga from Champa, Pirates of the South Sea. So they steal gold from rival civilizations which they are at war with. Bonus increases for every enemy city under blockade and from cargo ships in their ter territory whose owner does not have an active trade route to Champa. So their unique unit is the Ballista Elephant. It is a siege weapon which is capable of quickly attacking cities. And their unique improvement is the Square Well. The Chum Square Well provides food on coastal tiles. It may also be built along coastal trade routes to generate golden age points. So next we have from the original game, Gajah Mada from Indonesia, Spice Islanders. The first three cities founded on continents other than where Indonesia started, each provide two unique luxury resources and can never be raised. So their unique unit is the Chris Swordsman. It is a classical era melee unit that has a mystical weapon, whose abilities will be discovered the first time it is used in combat. May only be built by Indonesia. So their unique building I think is the Chandi, which replaces the garden, plus 25% great people generation in the city and plus 2 faith for each world religion that has at least one follower in the city. So unlike the garden, it doesn't have to be built next to a river or lake. Okay. Next, we have... Uh, next, we have Ram. Ram Kem Heng from Siam, father governs children. So food, culture, and faith from friendly city-states increased by 50%. The, their unique unit is the Narusuan's Elephant, powerful medieval mounted unit, weak to pikemen, only the Siamese may build it. This unit receives a bonus against other mounted units and has, and has a higher combat strength than the knight. And they are unique building which replaces the university. Uh, gives them plus two signs from jungle tiles worked by this city. So that's like exactly the same as the university, right? I'm not sure about the stats up above. Uh, all the science percentage and the culture that it gives. I think it gives more culture than the university, but I'm, I'm not sure. And the next modded save we have is Rizal from the Philippines, Pearl of the or Orient Seas. Upon signing open borders, both civilizations receive a free cargo ship. Whilst at peace, 
foreign units within your borders provide culture. Their unique unit is the Katipunero, which replaces the Rifleman, plus 1 movement in friendly territory and plus 25% attacking strength after the Philippines adopts an ideology. And their unique building, which replaces the harbor, is the Coral Church, plus 5% growth for every sea resource worked by the city. Forms a naval city connection with the capital city, plus 50% to city trade routes range originating from the city, and plus 2 gold when sea trade routes, three sea trade routes connect to another civilization. And we also have the Trung Sisters from Vietnam. The Ascending Dragon. Defensive structures within a city increases the spawn rate of great riders, artists, and musicians. We see plus 5% culture and plus 5% food in each city for each social policy adopted in the honor tree. So they are unique units. Is the Viet Cong. Gains invisibility and double movement in forests and jungles and a plus 25% defensive combat bonus when fighting against a Sith with a different ideology. Unlike the infantry, it also has a combat penalty in open terrains. And their unique building is the Water Puppet Theater, which replaces the Amphitheater. It has one slot for a great work of writing, more expensive than the Amphitheater, as well as providing an additional points of culture. Great works contained within a city, Water Puppet Theater increases a city's defensive strength by 5. And the last Civ, which will be the Civ that we are going to be playing as, is Parameswara from Malaysia, Alam Melayu. Naval unit station on work sea resources or atolls provide plus 1 food, and access food in cities generates additional culture. Their unique units is the Pesilat, which replaces Landsnacked. And the Pesilat is available at civil service and does not require the mercenary army social policy to unlock. Instead of gold, the Pesilat can be bought via culture and can be upgraded from workers. And can move immediately after purchasing in a city. And their unique improvement is the Kampong. It can be built on coast and ocean tiles and it provides plus one culture, plus one food, and plus one more, plus one culture if uh, after re researching compass. So, uh, that's, I think that's all of the safe that we are going to be playing with. So let's go to the setup. Here we are going to be playing on the Oceania type map because as you should have known, all of the Southeast Asian civs are normally uh, really good with uh, sea maps because well, the Southeast Asian is mostly islands. So we are going to be playing on standard map size and on a model difficulty with epic game piece and we're going to be enabling all of the victory types other than that i don't think we have anything else i think in this prologue video so let's start the game but guys uh actually we'll be uh we'll be stopping the video right here and we're going to start the playthrough on the next video. So, if you guys want to stay tuned on the playthrough, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!